Hello and welcome to Hilltop Terabi. This is my review of Sonic Origins, a modern day collection of Sonic's greatest 2D adventures. This collection includes the Mega Drive or Genesis classics, Sonic 1, Sonic CD, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. These four or five titles, depending on how you count Sonic 3 and Knuckles, are literally my favorite games of all time. In the past 31 years, I can't begin to count the sheer number of times I've bought these games. My point is, I've played the shit out of these games, and I love them all. So with me already owning so many copies, was it even possible for me to be excited for yet another re-release of these games? The answer was fuck yes. Modern ports in widescreen of all the classic games, including the longtime MIA Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, count me in. So from the moment this game was announced at Sonic Central on May 27th, 2021, I starved myself of classic Sonic. I didn't touch any of these games prior to release in order to build up maximum hype for the new compilation. As details of this game were released, it was revealed that the game would also include a museum mode with unlockable artwork, movie clips and audio from classic Sonic games. Prior to release, we also learned that the game would include new animations with writing from the excellent Ian Flynn to tie the stories of the games together. Excluding some pre-order deluxe version nonsense from Sega, this was looking like it could rival the superb Sonic Jam on the Sega Saturn Sonic Jam. to be the classic Sonic compilation GOAT. The game finally released on June 23rd, 2022, Sonic's 31st birthday, and I had the day booked off work to mark the occasion. To say I was excited was an understatement. So did it live up to the hype? Let's dive in. As soon as you fire this bad boy up, the presentation of the game is absolutely wonderful. The game starts with a stunning intro animation helmed by Sonic superstar Tyson Hess, and we are then greeted by a title screen with remixed music from Sonic Jam, as well as a bunch of colorful islands used to represent each game, including unexpected appearances from the Veggie Fortress from Sonic Spinball, used to represent the story and mission modes, more on these in a bit, and Flicky's Island from Sonic 3D, used for the museum. Assuming you paid for the deluxe edition, like muggins here, you can zoom in on these islands and explore, and play an almost Where's Waldo type game of spotting the various zones hidden around the place. Or you can just sit back and watch the different characters, animals and badniks fart around in the sun. It's lovely. After spending way too long viewing these islands, the first thing I did was jump into the brand new story mode, which lets you play through each of the classic games one after another, stitched together with wonderful new animated cutscenes written by another Sonic superstar, IDW Comics' Ian Flynn, to make one complete adventure story. This mode is presented in Anniversary Mode, one of Origin's two gameplay options. This is a new 16x9 mode, with lives removed in place of coins, which can be used to purchase unlockables in the museum, or you can spend the coins retrying special stages if you fail them. Some may call these quality of life improvements. I would say it makes the games a little on the easy side. There are ample opportunities to collect every emerald in these games anyway, without the need for retries, but it doesn't really matter. If it makes these games more accessible for today's kids, then wonderful. I should point out here that these games are new ports, not remasters, so if you've played these games 50 million times already like me, you'll definitely notice some differences in the way these games control. For example, being able to reach places you couldn't quite get to before, such as this caterpillar who was always just out of reach in the originals. The reason I mention this is because the other mode in the game, Classic, is billed as playing the games as you remember them if you're a doddering old fart like me, in 4x3 aspect ratio with lives, etc. But this isn't true. These are not emulations of the classics. They're the same new ports again, just with a different aspect ratio. Sonic 1 even has the spin dash, which wasn't introduced to the series until Sonic 2. Whatever though, it's fine. Anniversary mode is the main draw here for most people, I'm sure. Other new modes include an excellent mission mode, where you complete fun little challenges across the four games, ranging in difficulty from stupidly easy to infuriatingly difficult. If you want an S rank, I'm looking at you, Tornado Flyby. 
There's also a boss rush and a pointless but inoffensive mirror mode for people who prefer to run from right to left in their Sonic games. Anyway, with new additions out of the way, let's get back to the story mode for a moment. Being the total fucking badass that I am, I smashed through the entire thing in one sitting, collecting every Chaos Emerald, Super Emerald, and Time Stone in the process. I can't remember how long it took. Maybe nine hours? Maybe longer with toilet breaks and food breaks? Who knows? But going through these back-to-back, -back, tied together with stunning new cutscenes, was awesome. Honestly, I had the best fucking time. All of these games are near-perfect, timeless classics, and that doesn't change in this collection. But in truth, this was down to the quality of the original games as opposed to these specific versions being great ports or anything. Because as fun as this compilation is, there are issues, which we'll get into shortly. First though, let's quickly talk about the games themselves. I'm going to assume almost everyone watching has played these, so I'll keep this really simple. Sonic 1 is the slowest of the bunch, outside of Green Hill Zone and Starlight Zone, with more of an emphasis on precise platforming sections. But I enjoy it for what it is, even though later games massively improved on it. I can't overstate it enough, but playing this as a kid for the first time back in 91, it blew my fucking mind with the sense of speed and colorful graphics. It was so damn fun. Sonic CD is up next, and this is possibly the most divisive classic Sonic game of the lot. This one has a fiddly time travel mechanic, with much larger zones and an emphasis on exploration, which sees you travel to the past to destroy robot generators and metal Sonic holograms to create good futures. I could never be asked fannying around with this, so instead I always chose to blitz through the zones and create a good future by getting all the time zones from the game's excellent special stages, which see you destroying UFOs on a 3D map. I love Sonic CD's special stages. Next then is Sonic 2, which improves on the previous games in every conceivable way. It's faster, the act count has been dropped from 3 to 2 in every area apart from Metropolis Zone, and there are many more zones than in the first game. Sonic 2 also introduces the iconic Halfpipe Special Zones too, which are great fun and now easier than ever to beat in 60 FPS, as opposed to the... what? 5 FPS they probably were in the old games? Anyway, they are so much fun and I can't praise this game highly enough. And finally, we have Sonic 3 and Knuckles. In my opinion, classic Sonic at its absolute peak. It once again improves on the previous games in almost every way, although I feel Blue Spheres is a downgrade from Sonic 2's special stages. Anyway, it adds more characters, more levels, and an epic story, providing you read the manuals and connect that to what's being shown in the cutscenes. All of this makes for the biggest classic Sonic experience of the bunch. This game has been gone far too long, and it's great to see it back, even if that does come with a great big asterisk. So, so far I've talked about the wonderful cutscenes, great presentation, and a collection of some of the best games of all time. Sounds great, right? Unfortunately, not quite. This fucker definitely needs a hefty patch. Playing it through on the Xbox Series X, I encountered slowdown very frequently across all the titles. Not insane slowdown, it was perfectly playable, but very noticeable especially if you've played these games as much as me. The main offender was Sonic 3 & Knuckles, and Simon Thornley of Headcanon, the Sonic 3 & Knuckles port developer, voiced his frustrations on Twitter at launch regarding how poorly Sega had taken their port and integrated it into Origins. So, as is to be expected, it seems there was some Sega fuckery going on behind the scenes. For a more positive point, in a welcome addition to all four games, the developers have also added Sonic Mania's Drop Dash move into the Anniversary mode. But it doesn't work quite the same way in each game. It's fine in Sonic CD and Sonic 3 and & Knuckles, and works just like it did in Mania. But in Sonic 1 & 2, it works more like the way it did in the Sega Ages ports on Nintendo Switch, if I remember correctly. By this I mean you can't turn in mid-air while jumping out of a previous dash and then drop dash back the way you came from, if that makes sense. You need to come out of it, turn around on foot, and then perform another one to go back the way you came. It's just nowhere near as fluid. It feels strange that this move is so inconsistent, especially when playing story mode with the games back to back. 
Now let's quickly address the musical elephant in the room regarding the game's mostly excellent soundtrack. That being that Ice Cap Zone, Carnival Night Zone, and Launch Base Zone in Sonic 3 have new tracks due to issues relating to rights. And one or two other tracks are missing too. Now, I knew this was going to be the case, and I was absolutely fine with it. But unfortunately, the new tracks aren't great. They're the 1993 prototype tracks, which have been remixed and unfortunately kind of made worse in the process. You could make an argument that using these old tracks adds some authenticity to their inclusion. But to be honest, Sonic Team should have just gotten Sonic Mania's T-Lopes, another modern-day Sonic superstar, to compose some original tracks of a standard more in line with the rest of the soundtrack. These just don't hold up. While we're talking music, by the way, for whatever reason, Sonic 3 & Knuckles' music sounds very muffled compared to the other games on this collection. I just found it odd and thought it was worth mentioning. There's plenty of bugs present in Origins 2. Too many to go into here. We'd be here all day. But a few noticeable ones off the top of my head during the playthrough included getting stuck between a spring and a bumper in Spring Yard Zone and having to restart the level. Going up a vertical ramp in Flying Battery Zone, only to be shot off to the left-hand side instead of straight up in the air. And this happened every time I retried it. And, well, Sonic 2 Tails was just broken throughout. At the start of every level, he got stuck off-screen somewhere, and instead of flying back to catch up with Sonic, I could just hear him pissing around in the distance somewhere, frantically jumping and spin-dashing for the entire game. Now let's talk the museum mode and its various unlockables, which can be purchased with the game's new coins currency. There's a fairly comprehensive selection of Sonic songs from over the years in the sounds section, although several of them are named incorrectly. The artwork section is great, filled with promotional artwork, concept art, game boxes and manuals from different regions. It's excellent. But then we get to the movie section, which is lazy as hell. In addition to all the new cutscenes made for the game, we get 2018's Sonic Mania Adventures series, all of which can be viewed on YouTube anyway. We also get some clips from the Sonic Symphony concert, which again, can be viewed on YouTube, but in its entirety for free. And then we get... Animatics for the Sonic Origins cutscenes. Outside of people with an active interest in animation, is your average punter really going to care about watching these? when you can just watch the finished things instead. And while we're talking animations, as a bit of a side note here, Amy features very heavily in some of these cutscenes, especially the ending. She's fighting alongside Sonic Tails and Knuckles with her Pico Pico hammer. It suggests to me that she was intended to be playable at some point, but maybe I'm wrong. It would have been great if she was, though. Anyway, aside from the clips I just mentioned, that's it for the movies. There's nothing here like Sonic Jam had, which included commercials, trailers for the Sonic cartoons, Sonic rides and other mostly unseen animations. None of that. Why couldn't any of those be present here? Or why couldn't we get some trailers for Sonic's many past or upcoming TV shows or movies, for example? Anyway, let's wrap this up. Conclusion time. Despite its flaws, I had a nice time overall with Sonic Origins. It's a convenient way to own the 2D classics on modern hardware. The island menus and new cutscenes are excellent, mission mode is a blast, and the games themselves still hold up as more or less perfect in my opinion. But the ports themselves are in desperate need of a huge patch. They're perfectly playable, but the collection is seriously lacking in polish. There are issues with bugs, performance, and other more minor concerns, such as the muffled music in Sonic 3. Also, now that I think about it, the visuals don't look as sharp as they should. They're okay, but they're no Sonic Mania. Mission mode, story mode, and boss rush are great additions, but the museum mode, in particular the movie section, is severely lacking in content. I'm now at the point where I've beaten everything, unlocked everything, maxed out my coins with nothing to spend them on. Couldn't Sega have included unlockable Knuckles Chaotix, Sonic Spinball, or Sonic 3D to spend these on? By no means is this collection the disaster some would have you believe, though. This collection has great games with nice presentation, but is bare bones and kind of sloppy in its current state. Worth a purchase, but I hope they patch it soon. It deserves better. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button as it helps me out a lot. And please consider subscribing for weekly, evergreen, Sonic and Sega videos. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.